we look at the past, I would hope we can get inspired by looking at the craftsmanship and looking at the details and long to build better because we see beautiful things like this. Okay, so the builder this month, this, this time is Samuel McIntyre. Samuel McIntyre is one of my heroes. I've got like three building heroes, okay? William Buckland, Samuel McIntyre, and Palladio, okay? And Asher Benjamin. Okay, I've got a lot. Um, they, these guys are, uh, they're my heroes because they're multi-talented, okay? They're builders, craftsmen, and designers, okay? Uh, I think that's the model that I want builders to attain to today, right? That it's not just, you know, go design something and I'll build it, but let me help you craft and build something that makes sense. Uh, Samuel McIntyre is from Salem. He never leaves Salem. He doesn't go on a grand tour. Salem is kind of a fascinating story in itself. Remember I said that it was the number nine the size town? Basically when the... Uh, um, when the Revolutionary War starts, Boston can no longer be Boston because all the redcoats are there. And so they move the capital up to Salem, right? And so Salem becomes this bustling port. And uh, his, one of his clients, Alaska, Elias Derby, uh, ends up becoming one of the wealthiest guys, pirateering, right? Privateering. Uh, basically, you know, having these ships that run uh, and are very fast, they can beat the British ships, and they're bringing in, they're doing importing, right? And so they are the ones that are beating the British blockade and coming in and actually bringing things to America. So Salem explodes, okay? And for this unique little period of time, Salem becomes one of the richest cities in America. And Samuel McIntyre, of course, benefits from that. Now, he, his dad was a builder, and so he trains under his dad. Um, 1780s, he's listed as a carpenter house right, okay? A house right was someone who basically is a framer today, right? Uh, in the 1790s, he's known as a joiner, okay? Joiner is basically a trim carpenter. And, um, and then a car in the, by the 1800s, he's a carver, okay? And most of his work is carving. And so he does design work, he does drafting, he does, uh, he's self-taught completely in all of these things. Uh, he wrote and played music. He built a pipe organ. Um, I mean, uh, there's not really much he didn't do. You'll see that from his drawings. He had classical models that he was trying to figure out the proportions of people. He even had a, uh, uh, when the nation's capital was being built and there was a design competition, Sammy McIntyre actually entered that. And so um, he was very accomplished. It's one of his houses in Salem. If you want to just go on a fun trip, there's a Federal Street in Salem that you can walk down and you can see all these great houses. Two of them are Samuel McIntyre's. This is another one. Um, and we'll get into these details and showing, if I can blow this up, um, showing, do you see um, kind of this detailing in here? And there's, there's that kind of detailing here. But all of this stuff that's going on here is, is, you know, he is basically learning from uh, Robert Adam. He is friends with very wealthy men, very well-traveled men, and they're all sharing books, sharing details, talking about how to build. And so he's really practicing in this bustling little town these, these much finer details, right? These are, these are federal details. Notice the, the fan light over top with the leaded glass, right? Um, you know, just all of this kind of detailing in here is dainty and light and, and federal. He is a carver, okay? Obviously, these capitals here, this is the, uh, um, his famous house there in, 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 that he was carving. By his later career, he's no longer building. He's just designing and carving. <clears throat> this is a room of his from the Philadelphia Museum. Now we're going to talk more about this ornamentation and how he did it. He carved everything, but later in this period you'll see, or also in this period, for people who didn't have his talents, they were making composition moldings. And so that's more common uh, for some of the designs we'll see, but uh, this, this kind of tasteful refinement of what he was doing uh, and how he would design these rooms and how he'd put them together. Uh, is the reason why he's still called him an architect today, but he's really just a master builder. This was his design for the uh, state 
state capitol or, or for the U.S. Capitol. Um, these were some of his designs for one of his one of his projects. Where I mean, what does that look like, right? That looks like a Robert Adam design. Uh, this dainty fretwork, these swags that go around there, um, but the ability of him to lay out a cornice like this with the proportions and the carvings and the moldings, right? He was just a learner. He was he was self-taught, looking at looking at books, looking at great examples. He looked at Charles Bullfinch's drawings, uh, always learning. Um, fairly sophisticated. Remember in the Georgian period, we were talking about these guys, you know, there are no plans, right? And so in this period, as America becomes more mature, as clients become more refined, uh, this is designed for a streetscape. The reason it's shaded more over here is because that actually takes a curve around the corner. So, uh, you know, he, he had a real designer's eye uh, of how things should look and how things should go together. And, and then he was most famous for probably today, his furniture and his carving. Um, and, you know, he studied the human figure. I think I've got slides of that. This little fruit basket is kind of his claim to fame uh, that you see on his stuff. But, I mean, someone else built this furniture and then he did all the carving. And that's pretty common in his later career. He did carving for ships uh, and ship busts and the other things that were going on there. This is one of his carvings. Notice that little fruit basket there again down here. Uh, kind of his his mark, um, and then he, he, this is one of my favorite things. It's the Derby Tea House um, that he designed. Tons of details in this. I've done a study on this in my book where it shows all the proportions and all the details of how this all came together. That it was it was very wonderfully laid out. Uh, this is a church steeple he designed. He had one of James Gibbs' books. So we talked about the the, the books and how they still had influence in this period. Uh, you know, he was incredible. And so he did, he did so much. The lessons I want us to take from him um, is, is they talk about him always learning, okay? And uh, the books that he was reading and the books that he was, he died when he was 54. He had just ordered some books that were kind of university level books trying to figure out um, uh, the human figure, trying to, trying to become a better artist. Um, so he was always learning and you see his growth, right? Um, that, that greatness, right? Some people want to be a master craftsman tomorrow, right? And, and they, they don't go through the steps and you think about him starting as a carpenter in the 1780s, going to a joiner in 1790s, becoming a carpenter and a uh, carver in the 1800s and that's 30 years of work, right? Dedication to the craft. So, you know, that greatness takes time. He was always practicing sketching and drawing, right? And so I tell my girls that are, uh, is Faith here? The, uh, yes, there she is. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, they have a 15 minute sketch at the beginning of the day, every day. Now I got the, it's not my idea, historical concepts. Uh, the architectural firm, they start each day with the kind of voluntary 15 minutes of sketching. It's vital to learn, be able to move your hand and draw and sketch things and, and make things beautiful. So uh, it's very important. And then be kind. Apparently, he was just the nicest guy, okay? And everybody loved him, and he had more work than he knew what to do with. But there's, there's a lot to be said for reading his story and reading how uh, his letters to his clients were so gracious and kind. Um, Anyway, he was, he was just a wonderful human and uh, uh, you know, a great model for us to, to go forward.